Um, my name is Alison Valentine and I'm subject leader for French at Clangata Community School. Um, the project was undertaken by the uh, French, Welsh and English departments, so in collaboration with Mich Miss Michelle Pugh, Head of Welsh, and Mr Simon Rees, who is currently Head of English. Uh, just a little bit of a background to why we decided to embark on the project. Um, first of all, um, literacy, obviously, is a, is a key focus, and we um, generally traditionally have approximately 25% of our pupils coming into Year 7 with below average CAT scores in their verbal reasoning, so obviously that can be a big issue for us in the language department. Um, many pupils we found um, were not really demonstrating the ability to transfer skills from one language to another. Um, pupils traditionally lacking confidence in oracy and dealing with unfamiliar vocabulary. And we had a huge drive, obviously, to increase motivation, as we always are, and to increase the number of pupils carrying on with language learning beyond Key Stage 3. And obviously the whole school drive to ensure a consistent approach to raising levels of literacy. So our targets were to encourage teachers in the English, Welsh and MFL departments to share resources, ideas and good practice. So to give us again, as people have said, um, a reason to get together and to work together. Um, to involve pupils in setting agenda for their own learning. So we, we listen to pupils and ask them what sort of things do you enjoy doing. So we try to incorporate those things <coughs> in the project that we've embarked on and to demonstrate that there are lots of similarities between different languages and not to see them as three separate languages but to start comparing and contrasting them. Um, so what did we do? Well, the first activity we embarked upon was a quiz. Um, this was the idea from our Head of English, Mr Simon Rees, um, a registration quiz which we were very um, enthusiastic about first. We tried to sort of roll it out right throughout the school, um, which, which did work. I mean, eventually we kind of incorporated it just with year 10 and year 11. But basically the quiz was where um, we tried to incorporate um, three languages. So we tried to think of questions whereby they would be doing word activities um, in, in French, in Welsh, in English, trying to look at news stories, getting them to, to, to get information from keywords, etc. And I'll show you a little bit more about that later on. The second project was a drama project, because one of the things the children said was that they, they like to act, they like to sort of have that, that mask and, and sort of act behind that, and that, that was really popular, and we'll see some of that later. And the third was a spelling bee. Uh, year 7 particularly keen to, to have a little spelling test, because they were used to doing that in primary, and they liked the competitive element. Uh, so the first activity the registration quiz I've mentioned, um, Mr. Rees set up an electronic quiz which he sent out to form tutors at the start of every week um, and pupils had time and registration to complete the quiz and then there'd be a prize at the end of the week for the form to come back by the deadline which is 12 o'clock on a Friday, he's very strict about that, um, with the highest score, so a box of chocolates to share or um, the class allowed to go five minutes early for lunch, that kind of thing. Uh, just to give you an example of one of the quizzes. So we've just got um, a word search mystery, so that could be for words in various languages. They wouldn't be given the list of words, they'd have to find them and then guess the connection between the words. Um, uh, so typical English, um, just trying to guess and you can see that kind of thing, which, which always seem really popular with them. And, and then just looking at different celebrities, um, working out the links and to get information about those. And then there is a French example as well on the next link. Let's come to Christmas, and this one we, we also found really useful to teach and to demonstrate to Year 11, particularly the dangers of Google Translate when they <laughs> prepare for future <laughs> assessments. Um, so I let Mr. Reese sort of go well with that one. He typed them into Google, and these are the, the Christmas songs that the translations that came up, and the pupils had to use a dictionary to try and work out what the original song was. So they really enjoyed that, it was really good fun. So that was the quiz. Okay, the drama project, um, this probably proved to me the most popular, particularly with pupils in year seven and eight. Um, so our year eight pupils were involved in developing and performing a sketch in three languages. Um, a huge amount of work went into obviously trying to find an idea, but in the end we settled on the fact that in the Welsh and French departments we had a common topic of food and drink, which we were working on last summer and pupils use the vocabulary and structures that they've been taught in class to perform a sketch um, and the, the English department provided the drama workshop to actually stage it. Um, so basically the, the theme is we found a, a very short sketch online which was where um, a waiter 
I was in a cafe and a really difficult family arrived and he gets all the orders mixed up and we, what we did was we, we developed that to actually have that in three languages so the waiter was unable to speak any language but English the, child, the uh, Welsh family arrive and order their foods in Welsh and he has to try and cope with, with how he could understand what they wanted to eat. Then a French family arrive and order their food in French and then of course he gets the orders mixed up um, and then it's the, the fun element of how they're eating the different foods and actually they quite like it in the end and then they all start to chat. So I have got a, a quick clip to show you. I just, we just fast forward a bit for you to see the famous part of the sketch. <coughs> just sort of a little bit so they just use an idea. Kind of a cafe? Ah, cafe. So, cafe? Oui, un cafe, merci. Et deux croissants? Croissants? Deux? Deux. Deux croissants, oui, deux croissants, merci, monsieur. Je voudrais un chocolat chaud et un pain au chocolat. Ah, oui, chocolate show at Pan the Chocolate. Pan the Grill. Well, first, we need to bring you up. Okay, thank you. Do you Do you Ah, it's good play, A stiff life? A stiff life. Moo! Take, okay, take as the life a pimp weapon with you to be no. There you are, there you Okay, so that just gives you a bit of an idea, and um, as I say, it goes on to they get the wrong order and how they sort of cope with that. The children had a huge amount of fun um, preparing that. We did it with all the classes um, at the end of year seven. Um, and then um, obviously what we found was that the video of it was the bit that a lot of them they wanted to do it they didn't want to be videoed so we just chose a small group that were brave enough. Uh, we have done a lot of drama before where we've, we've um, got children to perform in the Estedford in different languages so it's something that they, they really enjoy doing I think it's something we really want to build on and all of them inevitably said that they, they, they will remember that vocabulary forever and actually I noticed when I came in there's a picture there in the middle of the sign with the, the boy in the wolf mask um, those pupils um, have now left our school probably about two or three years ago and they performed a sketch for the, when we um, started the CBLC project about five or six years ago and the girl on the left hand side, Jordan, did GCSE French and got an A star with us and she said, <coughs> one of the last things she said to me was, you know, I always remember the words from that play you taught us in year seven. So I think it just shows that they can recycle that vocabulary and it, it always sticks. They have so much fun doing it. Okay. So the spelling bee. Um, this was an idea, obviously, with your seven saying that they liked the competition of, of trying to spell new words. Uh, so what we did was we incorporated the key words that, that the pupils were using in their French, Welsh and English lessons into the new um, school diary, because we had a new school handbook uh, produced this year. Um, and then uh, pupils were given a, a page, a dedicated page for each language in their planners. And in their, their year seven registration time, um, time was given for them to practice and learn words and then they had an interform competition so a spelling competition where each form would choose two people in the class who were the best spellers and then they would eventually compete against other forms in, in year seven and that was a huge motivating factor for them um, so the outcomes uh, people's <coughs> confidence in or oracy has definitely increased um, some of the pupils you saw performing there in the play are, are pupils who, who lack confidence in class um, who find pronunciation really difficult and they've all said that they've, they find that much easier now and they're more prepared to have a go. Um, pupils are more aware of how important it is to pronounce things clearly. When they have to perform something like that, they, they realise by watching it back afterwards that if they make a mistake, it can have an impact on understanding. So they, they're less worried about making the mistakes because it's fun, but they appreciate they have to work really hard at it to make sure it's clear. Uh, pupils tend to take far more risks in their language lessons. They're recycling vocabulary that we've used um, in our drama um, sketches, etc., and they, they're prepared to obviously be more inventive with their work and use that in their own work. And what we originally intended was that they would make links between languages. Um, I think another thing to point out as well is that pupils now don't see the Welsh and French department as being in, in competition with each other, which we found was an issue in Key Stage 4 particularly. They'd say, Oh, I'm not going to do French, I'm going to do Welsh because. And that's not a problem. We just we, we want to see they're working together. And I think because we've done that, they're more inclined to want to take more than one language as well because it's not competition anymore, which is great. 
So the way forward, um, obviously we want to continue with all three projects because they've been hugely successful. Um, we'd like to embed the quiz into the PSHE curriculum um, and maybe encourage older pupils to start to devise a quiz for younger pupils because the thing that Mr. Reese found was it, it's quite hard to have something different every week because you, know, you soon start to run out of ideas, but the pupils are very inventive and they come up with lots of nice ideas for them. Um, to involve pupils in drama activities in both French and Welsh lessons and to continue to develop key lists of vocabulary. So obviously as we do a topic, um, looking at common words we can use across the languages and to encourage them to, to use those and learn them for their spelling bee. Uh, further projects, because we have other ideas have been sparked off from the things that we have done, uh, we'd like to push on the use of drama but also the use of music and song. And I was really inspired when I went along to the Camp Sing um, training a few weeks ago down in, in West Wales. Um, and again, they like to act and they like to sing, so that's <coughs> another good, good way in to, to improve their pronunciation. And we've also uh, looked at a website called Grow Story Grow, some of you might have seen that and used it. And again, it's the storytelling technique to, to actually use common stories across three languages and encourage them to develop their own based on those. Thank you for listening.